And, and so tonight, um, I'm excited because it's still, <clears throat> excuse me, it's still uh, is based on Jesus. Yeah, we're going to be looking at Jesus again. But since we're in this Holy Week leading up to Easter, uh, leading up to Good Friday, which is in a couple of days, um, we're going to look at a passage in Luke uh, chapter 24. So if you can get there um, while I'm kind of setting it up and letting you know um, the context and everything that's led up to this point. Again, Luke 24, get there. And we're looking at verses 13 uh, through 34. And the header in the Bible is on the road to Emmaus. At least that's what I have in my Bible. And I'm going to be momentarily reading out of the ESV. Uh, Again, I don't know if it's the best translation. I read from the Passion uh, last week. I just like how this reads. This was uh, my Bible. Shout out to Rob Strong. If he at all watches this somehow, some way, I love you, bro. Thank you for this Bible. Way back when, when you got married, uh, thank you for hooking up all of your groomsmen with Bibles. So ESV is what I'm reading out of. But um, again, Luke 24, get there, grab your Bible, Version Bible app. Um, this is pretty much to the point where, um, a lot of time has passed where Jesus came, um, to Jerusalem, right on, on, uh, on a donkey, right? Palm Sunday, right? Came. And then, uh, people were cheering his name, Hosanna, Hosanna. And just as quick as the, the praises came and then came, uh, the ridicule, uh, the persecution, the beating, the, the crucifixion, and ultimately the, the death of Jesus. And so the death happens then, and then he was buried, right, and put in a tomb. But we all know on the third day, he rose again. He didn't stay there permanently. Like a lot of things have changed right now. Um, I'm happy that that hasn't changed. Like the tomb is still empty. And so, uh, so a lot, fast forward, moving forward now, we see there's a moment here in Luke, uh, again, 13 verses 13, all the way to 30, 35, um, titled Road to Emmaus. And there's a couple of people, we get one of these uh, individuals' names, uh, we don't get the other one, but um, they're having a conversation. It's pretty cool because Jesus uh, kind of inserts himself into the conversation. So I'm going to read and you'll see what I mean. Um, so at this point, if you want to mute me, uh, that's fine because I don't have the best reading skills. Uh, so if you want to mute me and read it on your own and then unmute me, hopefully, um, when I'm done, uh, you can do that. It's all good. I will not be offended. So here we go. Luke 24, 13 through 34 says this. Uh, that very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking, uh, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered, are you the only visitor to, to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened uh, there in these days? And he said to them, what things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, uh, a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to, the, uh, to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was uh, the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some woman of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him, uh, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the, that the Christ should suffer these things to enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpret, uh, interpreted to them in all the scriptures of things concerning himself. So they drew near to a village, uh, to the village which they were going. He acted as if he was going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. 
And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose at the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the uh, eleven and those who were with, uh, with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. So, again, long story. Um, if you tracked with me and didn't mute me, awesome. Uh, again, a lot to uh, kind of digest within this story. Easy read, though, and um, but a lot to pick apart. And so, again, with, with the previous uh, pieces of Scripture, stories that we read, um, a lot of us have heard them before. Um, we've heard them uh you know, in Sunday school, or we've just heard them naturally through our day, daily Bible reading, or you know, any any way uh, to to really, you know, read these stories. I'm sure we've we've heard this one before, where there's two travelers leaving Jerusalem on the road to Emmaus. Um, one of them, Cleopas, the other one we don't know, but um, man, they were in this situation of of witnessing all these these great things, witnessing Jesus. And then witnessing um, everything that he went through, right? The beating, the torture, um, man, just the ridicule, everything to where ultimately he was killed. And even though they say like, yeah, he, um, you know, there was a woman that went and the tomb was empty and they saw angels and, and yeah. And so even though they're saying this, like in their hearts, like they're just kind of, they're kind of broken. They're kind of in a place of, I don't know, doubt, worry, or ju they're just trying to like, like just imagine it. They're just walking side by side and just kind of, man, what was up with that? I thought this was supposed to happen. And I thought he was supposed to do this. Like, cause in their minds, along with a lot of the people, they thought he was there to like, to conquer, like a mighty conqueror, not like a, not like a selfless uh, servant, you know, someone that would ultimately sacrifice himself. That wasn't in their mind at all. And so to witness everything that went down, um, but to still say, yeah, you know, the, I heard the tomb was empty. There was something that happened in here um, that that needed to be uh, fixed ultimately. And so what happens? We see Jesus just kind of strolling along. He's, he's resurrected. It's crazy. Like he, he's resurrected at this point. And what does he do? He finds, he goes and finds these two people and he just joins in on their conversation. Kind of weird. Like if you were just talking with one of your, I, I take it these two pe people were really close, really good friends. Um, it kind of be weird if someone that you you didn't really know, because again, they they didn't recognize him. Their eyes were kept from from recognizing him. The scripture says it kind of be weird. Like I don't, who are you? like who are you? Okay, well you can walk with us, I guess. Um, yeah, this is what you, you want to know what we're talking about. Well, th well, let me tell you. Let me tell you what we're talking about. And so they go. And again, they tell him everything, and and they just share with him, um, their 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 heart, and everything that that they're trying to process in here. What's going on in here is is always connected within here, and so um, it's pretty cool to see that Jesus, like one of the first things he does when he's resurrected is he he meets these two people and he walks with them and he talks with them and he hears them out, and so there's a couple of things that I observed. Um, in my time reading this, and I want to share it with you uh, briefly. Hopefully it's brief, um, but hey, we have nothing but time, and I will try not to bore you, but there, there's the three things that I've I kind of picked up on, that everyone has uh, their own road. That's the first thing. Everyone has their own road. I put in parentheses, faith journey, right? Everyone has a road that they walk on. Um, it might be similar. It's not the same, but it could be very similar. Um, or it could be drastically different, but it's it's a road nonetheless. It's our own faith journey, um, where we're at in our walk with Christ. Um, I know it can be, it's a difficult thing to do. I know I hopped on uh, through our um, Instagram, and, and we do posts every day through YouVersion Bible app, and I talked about how um, Jesus in the Beatitudes, I, I was talking about blessed those who are persecuted. And so uh, the road is is a tough one. For any Christ follower, but again, it could look 
similar or it could be drastically different, um, but everyone has a road. Um, so that's their faith journey. And so if you're taking notes, you can jot that down. Second one is everyone has an Emmaus. And in parentheses, what do I mean by that? I mean, everyone has something that's familiar that they're trying to get to. Like there's a road that they're traveling to get to their Emmaus, something that's familiar, something that that is that is known, right? In a time where it, there's a lot of unknown, um, a lot of uh, unclear things um, that surround us, we're just trying to get back to normal. I've I've even said it myself, man. I I, I really uh, truly hope that this passes quick and we can just get back to normal. Um, I've said that, I've heard that, and so everyone has an Emmaus. And the third thing is Jerusalem. Everyone has a Jerusalem. And what does that mean? That means the unforeseen, the things that we didn't anticipate, the things that we we, we thought one thing and was drastically another, right? I, I was talking about how the people thought that Jesus was going to come as a, just a conqueror, right? Like a, like a, a terminator sent, you know, to earth. And if you ever seen the terminator movies, I don't, I don't uh, promote those. I'm just saying, but like, to come and, and to just conquer and, and lead and just, ah, here I am, you know, for my people. And but that's what they had in their minds, but it was totally different. And he came to serve, right? He, he didn't come uh, to be served, but to serve. And so uh, that was totally different than what they were thinking. That was the unforeseen. And then ultimately with these two characters, um, even though they were saying like, yeah, he, the tomb was empty and, you know, angels came up, you know, I heard that the angels came and there's visions, or, you know, and um, for them to say is one thing, but them to believe it is another thing because to them, what they witnessed, the crucifixion, the death, the burial, um, man, and to, to hear about it, but to not see, it's like the unforeseen. And so it has an impact. So everyone has Again, a road, a faith journey, has an Emmaus, uh, what's familiar to them, and has a Jerusalem, things that are unforeseen. And again, I feel like in our context, our Jerusalem could be uh, this COVID-19. Uh, COVID and so um, unforeseen, didn't know it was going to have this great of an impact. But nonetheless, we're still traveling uh, the road. We're still trying to do this thing called life and live out our faith. And so um, it was one thing I wanted to point out was how cool it was that on the road, um, I don't know how far they were when, you know, insert Jesus into the mix, but Jesus comes alongside them and talks with them and asks them literally right here in verse 19, what things I highlighted that in my Bible, what things. And so he, he knows, right? It, he's Jesus. He's, he's God. Like he, he knows, but he asks them, and I've I've heard this passage, this this portion preached before, and it's kind of like this hilarious, you know, Jesus is just, you could see his um, emote like his comedic side or what, and and why I think that is true, I really think this is his compassionate side, because he already knows, but he just wants to like hear it from them, like he, this is the thing about Jesus, like. When he came and lived uh, his life on earth, um, up until the death, burial, resurrection, 40 days, and then ascended, he was always looking at the interior, not the exterior, not the not things on the outside, but always the internal. And so he was looking at the condition of their heart. And so he was seeing kind of on their faces, it said they were sad. We get that depiction, but he was looking at their heart and he wanted them to relay to him and really just share with them what was on uh, their heart. Like any type of worry, like for us, so to put it in our context, any type of worries, any type of doubt, right? The unknown, any type of fear, any type of failures, any type of man. I thought like this year I was going to uh, go to the playoffs and hopefully go to the state championship and win. But now like that's gone and it was my senior year. Like I was really like anticipating that and that was totally not in my plans whatsoever that was unforeseen i didn't i didn't think that was going to happen um due to this corona covid thing you know or a job like some of you are like man yeah at this time i'm gonna just try and land a job and try and work as much as i can but now it's like 
it, it's only jobs that are open that are essential, right? We have to stay at home. We're being advised to by our authority, our leadership, right? That's in place to say, hey, unless it's essential, like stay home. And so with that, I know unemployment and is like through the roof. And for some of you, again, like I just wanted to work a job and, and have a normal like summer job that every student has or, or, or maybe for any young adults or adults that are joining in, like man, I was, I was expecting a promotion and this killed that promotion. Like I did not see that coming. And so all this worry and, and, and we talk about worry and fear and doubt, but what about like frustration, right? What about anger? Like I know the Bible says it's not good to, to harbor those things and really have those and let it consume your heart, but, but we're human nonetheless. And we go through these emotions and, and that's, that's humanity, that's human nature. And so to really battle with these emotions, but not just with with ourselves but to have someone uh, that's someone being jesus to where we can just air it out and release it and talk to him and let him know um that that's what the scripture said it gives us permission to do that and so i i was reading this and first peter came uh into my mind and we've been seeing this verse with a handful of others that have been going around lately it's it, it's right here i'm going to read it first peter five i'm going to read actually not just seven but six in seven because i can't believe i would truly believe you cannot do seven unless you do verse six so here it is humble yourselves therefore under god's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time here we go cast all your anxiety on him because he what he cares for you like in this scripture in our lives right now jesus the son of god god himself he cares about you so much wherever you're at so much so that if you were to think about it like this so when he uh in in the scriptures here when he uh rose he only had 40 days before right to before he ascended to the right hand of the father 40 days wouldn't you think that there's more Im important things to do like just think about it like man like this whole the two travelers on this little road to this little it's not even a city it's like a little village like Emmaus, I've only heard about this city like in this part of the Bible, and that's it. Um, so that's how small, or you know, lack of insignificant, maybe this village, and maybe even these people are. But to God, He doesn't view it like that. He sees you. He sees me as so important, so much so that He's gonna take time. Whatever road you're walking right now, whatever you're going through, I just want you to know that Jesus is there. And he wants to talk with you and he wants to hear what is going on, what's going on inside of your heart. Why? Because he cares for you. You can cast anxiety. You can cast it all on him because he cares for you. But that's the thing. He's not going to, and he can, he's got, he's Jesus. And I believe that within a, you know, snap of a finger, boom, God works and moves um, in a mighty, uh, mysterious way. But more often than not, he's going to walk along with you on this road and guide you and strengthen you and encourage you and maybe not pluck you out, but really, really just put an arm around you and just say, hey, I'm here. I'm here to talk. And so um, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I, I think you needed to hear that, that God's, a, even when your friends aren't, Right. I know literally not that maybe through FaceTime and Zoom and Snapchat and whatever, TikTok and all that other social media stuff. But uh, when your friends aren't there, when even family, close people, mentors, role models in your life aren't there, just know that that Jesus is. And here's the coolest thing. Here's the coolest thing that God reveals his word. Also himself, he reveals his word to you while you're on the road. So Jesus doesn't just like, okay, man, here you go. Here's like a salad shoulder. Just, just let it out. And right. And then it turns into a vent session. And then you're just like angry. And you're like, Ugh, blah, 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 blah. and that was, and she, and he, and I didn't, and, blah, and this is so messed up. Uh, like it doesn't turn into that. This is what happens in the text, right? He asks what things they let him know. He stops them. And then you can just kind of hear, like, through his dialogue, what he says, just kind of like, man, like, oh, foolish ones, slow to heart not to believe what the prophets have spoken. 
Like, was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things uh, and enter into his glory? Like, w- was it not necessary? Here, let me, here, let me uh, tell you and, and maybe educate you. Here, let me fill you in. And, right, and it says here, uh, in the beginning with, the, with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures concerning who? Himself. And so that's the thing on this road that now it's a two way, it's a, it's a dialogue. It's two ways. We can talk with him and then he's going to talk to us. And so whatever is in here, once we get that out, he's going to then put back in. You know what I mean? Because if it's, if it's full, I have, I have a water bottle here just quick. This wasn't planned, but let's say this is full, right? And I, and this is just like fear, worry, doubt, anger, frustration. Oh my goodness. What the heck? Like, why did this happen? Oh my, like, oh my word, when's this going to end? All this is right. And, and this is, this is your heart, let's say, and it's full. But when you're talking with God, you empty it. Yeah. You cast it on him. Why? Cause he cares. And then you get to a point where it's empty. And that's the moment where God will then start speaking in truths, encouragement, Hey, this is, I got this. I'm bigger than this. I'm the alpha and omega. I saw this coming before it even came and I'm going to see you through it. Don't work. Like he's going to fill this up all the way to full of his word and his truth. What the Bible has to say. So that's why I'm encouraging each and every day through these daily verses to be reading the word of God and to be emptying out your heart and, and filling it with good things, fruitful things. And so that's the cool part, man, while you're walking this road, right? Everyone has a road. Everyone has a road, uh, and on that road, God's going to be speaking to you. And so when they reached Emmaus, when they reached what was familiar, right, when we get through this whole COVID, quarantine, stay at home, we're going to reach that uh, familiar, right, that normal. I want everything to be back to normal, and we're going to get there. We're uh, in, in this scripture, it took seven miles. I don't know what time length it's going to take to get there for us in this situation. Um, But God will see it through nonetheless. Again, he walked with them all seven miles, all seven of them. And, and, and so that's encouraging to me, but here's the most encouraging part was verse 31. Take a look. If you have your Bibles with you right now, take a look. Verse 31. uh, I have it right here and it says, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. So they walked the road, they were talking, right? God was talking with them as well. And they reach uh, the village. Jesus was going to keep going, but they're like, no, Jesus, come with, come stay. And they invited him into their house and they, and they um, broke bread. It says he, he took the bread, right? He blessed it. He broke it and he gave it. And then what happens? Verse 31, their eyes were open and they recognized him. And so that's the cool part. Not only will he walk with you to get you back to your Emmaus, the familiar, but he'll like exceed that. It's crazy. This is what God does. God doesn't want to get you back. He wants to get you beyond. Does that make sense? Like he doesn't want to just get you back to how things used to be. And that's good. And that's, and that's where our minds go as, as just, it's just human nature. Like, I want to get back. I just want to get back on track and back to where everything was going. Again, not a bad thing, but this is uh, the difference between us and God. God doesn't want to get you back. He wants to get you beyond. He wants you to get back to, like, better than than normal. He wants to get you past that. And that's that's the great thing. That's the amazing thing about our God is he cares about us so much and he loves us so much. There's nothing that he would not do for us. We see that in John 3, 16, what that he gave his one and only son. There's nothing he wouldn't do. And there's nothing more that he doesn't want to see have happened than for us to go beyond what we think as, um, man, normal. And this is what it's supposed to be like. And no, he wants better things for us. And so uh, that was just the encouraging thing that stuck out to me was that, man, our God, he's so good. He's going to, because again, everyone has a road. Everyone has an Emmaus. Everyone has a Jerusalem. We walk this thing, our faith journey, right? We walk this thing out day to day. It's tough. It's hard. We're all wanting to get to a place that is familiar, right? That we that we can relate with. 
And right now we're facing a Jerusalem. Everyone has a Jerusalem. Everyone has a Jerusalem. Sorry for that pause. My battery's getting low. It's at 20%. Um, but the faith journey, the familiar, the unforeseen. And so um, that's tonight's word that I wanted to share with you. And it's pretty cool. I was just reading. This is a little bonus, a little extra. All right. So verse 30. Get your Bible. No, seriously, highlight, underline, take notes. 30. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it. I'll repeat that. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it. What did he do? He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it. And so just reading those three things there in your faith journey, there's going to be moments where God will bless you. Um, maybe with uh, external things, yes, but he's going to bless you with his presence. He's going to bless you with his word. And once that happens, what he broke it, he's going to break some things in your lives that, that's keeping you captivated, like captive, that's holding you back. Maybe some emotions or thoughts or anger, feelings, things that just aren't true. He's going to break that. And then once that happens, what is it he gave it? He's going to give you. He's going to give you what you ultimately need, the words that you really need to be hearing, uh, truths that really are of him and not from the enemy. Because the enemy always tries to slip in there and, and say um, things that uh, just really aren't truth. And so, again, he blessed it. He broke it. He gave that a little bonus, a little extra. So I'm going to pray for you guys. And it looks like the Joneses logged on. So Hudson, you got pizza dinner coming your way. Love you, bro. Um, but let's pray. I'm going to close my Bible and we'll pray. And that's it, guys. Love you. Thanks for joining. Uh, yeah.